to the daily grind thanks for checking out the channel make sure to hit subscribe if you're new and hit thumbs up if you're not a baby back bagel biting bitch boy because you know what time it is it's full time mma all right full time family let's get into the ufc on big fox fight night robbie lawler versus rafael dos anos main card predictions this card is stacked gonna be a great night of fights in about 10 days from now um in three days this weekend we do have ufc fight night uh, who's fighting this? Cub Swanson versus Brian Ortega, but also this weekend, uh, Vasil Lomachenko's fighting in boxing. So there's a lot of combat sports going on this weekend, but after that, we have UFC on Big Fox, Robbie Lawler. So two weeks from now, Robbie Lawler versus Rafael Dos Anjos in just a little under two weeks. Gonna be a stacked card as always when the UFC comes to Big Fox, but as stacked as this card is, it was originally super stacked as Jose Aldo was in the co-main event in a rematch versus Ricardo Lamas, but we all know by now that Jose Aldo stepped in on short notice for Frankie Edgar to fight Max Holloway for the UFC's featherweight title, so now Josh Emmett has stepped up on short notice to replace Jose Aldo, but other than that, these main Main card fights are all great fights every single fights got at least a top 10 ranked contender in it on the main card so with that being said let's start off with the first fight of the night Glover Teixeira versus Misha Serkinov Glover Teixeira is a storied UFC veteran who's 2-2 two two in his last four fights since 2016 with wins over Jared Cannonier and Rashad Evans. His two losses are uh, to Aleander Gustafson and I believe Rumble Anthony Johnson. Uh, most recently, he lost to Alexander Gustafson via fifth round knockout. It was pretty devastating. But on that same card, Misha Serkinov fought Vulcan Ozdemir. So Misha Serkinov and Glover Teixeira, who are fighting, both are coming off knockout losses on the same card. Misha Serkinov is the current number seven ranked light heavyweight in the world. Glover Teixeira is the current number three ranked light heavyweight in the world. So this is, both of these guys are in the top 10, but Misha Serkinov is 13 and three overall, four and one in the UFC. Glover Teixeira is 26 and six overall. So a lot more experienced, nine and four in the UFC, also more experienced in the UFC. Glover Teixeira is 38 years old, kind of at the tail end of his career, and he's fighting Misha Serkinov, who's 30 years old, and he was just streaking as he was on a four-fight winning streak before being knocked out by Vulcan Ozdemir in the first round. He was 3-1 and one in his last four fights since 2016, with wins over Nikita Kurlov and in Kutalaba. So, um, both of these guys are top 10 light heavyweights coming off of knockout losses on the same card, as I said before. Vol uh, Glover Teixeira is a storied veteran and a former light heavyweight title challenger who's going to be fighting a younger but less experienced fighter who was surging before being stopped by no time Vulcan Ozdemir and we know Vulcan Ozdemir now will be challenging Daniel Cormier next for the light heavyweight title so Vol no time Ozdemir is definitely no slouch he went on after this fight to knock out um Jimmy Manawa also so with that being said I'm going to be picking Misha Serkinov to win this fight get back to his winning ways with a win over probably his most experienced opponent he's fought to date but Misha Serkinov has been fighting um, even though the guys he's been fighting haven't been veterans of the sport to say a lot of the guys he's been fighting are experienced they're still tough guys so with that being said I'm picking the younger less experienced fighter but still a top contender to get the win versus Glover to share it here in the first fight opening up the main card so next we're moving to Mike Perry versus Santiago Ponzinibbio this has the potential to be a very good fight as all of Mike Perry's fights do Mike Perry's a knockout artist looking to get in and close the distance and knock your ass out there's not really much secrets to Mike Perry's game plan as far as what he's planning to do he wants to get in there and knock dudes out he said he's a black belt with these hands if they touch him up break your jaw hey I fuck with Mike Platinum Perry man it's really hard for me to pick against Mike Perry as he's one of my favorite UFC prospects but boy is he getting kind of it's not even that he's getting thrown to the wolves I mean Santiago Pozzanil is definitely a wolf and going to be the most experienced tough guy Mike Perry's faced to date but Mike Perry's style I mean the only person we've seen beat Mike Perry is Alan Joban as Mike Perry you know was undefeated before that fight but Alan Joban kind of showed that if you don't play Mike Perry's game you've got the potential to beat him you know you just don't play the game you definitely just don't want to go blow for blow with Mike Perry but you can kind of maybe outpoint him take him down a couple of times and get the win so Santiago Penibio 
he who's on i believe what a five fight winning streak he's either a four or yeah he's on a five fight winning streak he's 31 years old the most experienced guy mike perry's fought he's got wins over high level fighters santiago Ponzinibbio, such as gunner nelson most recently even though there was a quite a few controversial eye pokes he got the knockout in that fight but even if you don't go off of that fight santiago Ponzinibbio's beat nordine taleb zach cummings and court mcgee all in this win streak so Santiago Paz has been in there with some really, really good guys. I think he's got what it takes to put together a good game plan and be able to come in here and break my heart and get the win over Mike Perry. So let's move to the co-main event of the night. Cheer me back up a little bit. I don't guess I'm not going to get cheered up. I just want to get off of the topic of one of my favorite fighters I'm predicting, predicting against because I hate doing it. But it is what it is, man. So let's go to the co-main event of the night. Ricardo Lamas versus Josh Emmett. Ricardo Lamas was originally scheduled to be um, rematching Jose Aldo, as I said in the beginning of the video. But he stepped in. We know how that went. So now Ricardo Lamas is going to be facing Josh Emmett, who is 12-1 overall, 3-1 in the UFC. Um... Josh Emmett took this fight on short short notice. He's coming off of a unanimous decision win over Felipe Arantes in October. It was on the Donald Cerrone versus Darren Till card. So not a lot of people probably seen Josh Emmett's last fight, but all four of his fights in the UFC have been decisions. One split win. His only loss has been a split decision loss to Desmond Green. But Josh Emmett's coming in here and he's facing a fucking dog in Ricardo Lamas, number three ranked featherweight in the world. Ricardo Lamas, 18 and five overall, nine and three in the UFC, two and one in his last three fights since 2016, and he's riding an impressive two-fight winning streak since um, losing to the current champion Max Holloway. His two wins are over Charles Oliveira and Jason Knight. I'm big fans of both of those guys. They're both high-level fighters. So Ricardo Lamas just showed how much you know the levels to this shit because as good as charles Oliveira and jason knight are ricardo lamas is just kind of in that upper echelon so ricardo lamas is a top ranked what featherweight who's fighting the guy stepping in on short notice so of course as always i mean uh josh emmett has a chance to win but i'm just picking ricardo lamas he's probably going to be a heavy favorite coming into this fight so let's move to the main event of the night one of the hardest fights for me to pick up the night for sure the usually it's kind of not not the case that way but man rafael dos Anjos versus robbie lawler is going to be such a great fight and it's going to tell us a lot about the welterweight division it's part of the deck being shuffled in the welterweight division process i mean the winner of this fight very likely could face uh, Tyron Woodley for the next welterweight title shot or the winner of this fight could maybe fight Colby Covington if Tyron Woodley's still healing up from his injury for a number one contender spot. There's a lot of things that could happen with the result of this fight, but man, this fight, just the fight itself is going to be fucking amazing. Both of these guys are former champions in the UFC. Rafael Dos Anjos was a former lightweight champion who's moved up and looked really good at welterweight, undefeated at welterweight since he's moved back up. Robbie Lawler's the former welterweight champion who was knocked out by Tyron Woodley but has since put together a couple of wins on his way to reclaiming his title. So, um, let's get into a little bit of the knowledge. Uh, Robbie Lawler is coming most recently off of a win over Donald Cowboy Cerrone. It was a unanimous decision at UFC 214. Some people felt like Donald Cerrone won, but the third it really came down to the, the third and final round and... Um, kind of had that going I personally kind of had that going for Robbie Lawler so I wasn't too surprised by the decision but it was a great fight of course before that was his loss to Tyron Woodley but before that was when Robbie Lawler was the champion he lost his belt to Tyron Woodley he had wins over Carlos Condit Rory McDonald two wins over Rory McDonald win over Johnny Hendricks <clears throat> Robbie Lawler is definitely a, a storied veteran uh, a legend of the sport he's probably going to go into the Hall of Fame as he you know won the title he challenged for the title before came back won the title defended the title successfully and then lost the belt but Robbie Lawler is one of the veterans one of the most experienced guys in the welterweight division as he's got almost what 40 fights he's 28 and 11 so he's almost got 40 fights this will be his 40th professional fight um, experienced in the UFC Robbie Lawler's only 35 years old but one thing about Robbie Lawler is he's been through a 
you know, quite a few wars. So you, people kind of wonder where he's at, even though he looked good in his performance versus Donald Cerrone. So I don't think we have to question that here. He is going to, he's still been through a lot of wars. I mean, that's just, that's just fucking fair. In the fight versus Carlos Condit, I'm looking at UFC.com. It's looking like he was outstruck almost by 100 strikes, even though he won the split decision and it was fight of the night. Robbie Lawler, he's just a guy that gets in wars. I mean, when he goes in, he's got a fifth round TKO over Rory McDonald. That was definitely a war. And then he got knocked out by Tyron. Woodley kind of got his egg scrambled a little bit there and then he's coming most recently off of that win over Donald Cerrone but with all that being said I do believe I'm going to be picking Rafael Dos Anjos who has been on a little bit of a tear and man it's really hard because I, I honestly believe if Robbie Lawler was in his championship form and he was fighting Rafael Dos Anjos who I, I, I kind of I I kind of, it's just so hard for me to pick this fight. It's almost a fucking coin flip. I don't want to pick against Robbie Lawler. I really think Robbie Lawler might be the better welterweight. Now, if we're talking about just technical skills overall, probably give it to RDA. But if we're talking about the better welterweight, I kind of give the edge to Robbie Lawler. But something in me just is, I mean, Rafael Dos Anjos has momentum on his side. I mean, he did lose to Tony Ferguson before pretty you know one-sided fight of the night Tony Ferguson beat Rafael Dos Anjos before he moved up the welterweight since then uh, Rafael Dos Anjos looked good in his welterweight debut versus Tarek Safadin and then he submitted Neil Magny in the first round which was also looked good but we didn't get to see much so that's why it's so hard for me to pick Rafael Dos Anjos here because even though I believe Rafael Dos Anjos might be um technically a little bit better of a fighter overall well-rounded he's i don't know how he really it's kind of hard for me to say how he's going to do against the best welterweights in the world he fought no magni but we didn't get to see much in that fight as no magni was submitted in the first round Tarek safety he looked good in that fight so I'm going to pick Rafael Dos Anjos, who had trouble making 155 pounds toward the later stages of his career so the weight cut was affecting him even though I tend to not pick guys who are coming up a weight division. It, it's a little different when guys are just like killing themselves making 155. If you're completely killing yourself and passing out making the weight, then I think it's better to move up. Rafael Dos Anjos has a little bit of momentum on the side, but man, honestly, you know what, guys? You know what? I'm about to flip a coin right fucking now. I got a coin, and I swear to God, that's going to be my pick on this fight because it's really too hard. Um, in my head, I kind of want to pick both of these guys. Fuck. I want to pick both of them. I'll just put it this way. I think RDA might be a little bit better of a fighter overall. Pound for pound wise, RDA is the better fighter. But I think Robbie Lawler might be the better welterweight. So that's why it's so fucking hard for me to call. I was originally going to pick Rafael Dos Anjos. But right now, I'm saying Rafael Dos Anjos is heads on this motherfucking coin flip. Boom. And it's heads. Okay, I'm sticking with my pick. Rafael Dos Anjos, I'm picking him in, and I've explained why. I think he's a little bit better of a fighter, but I just don't know how he's going to look at welterweight when he actually gets in there and doesn't get a first-round submission over one of the best welterweights in the world. Really hard fight to call. I'm going with Rafael Dos Anjos. I'm about to walk my dog, and when I come back, I'm answering the 3,000 subscribers' questions. Uh, much appreciated to everybody listening to this video and everybody that's hit subscribe and everybody that's just lurking. With that being said, it is what it is. Let the full-time family know what the fuck you tap in the comments. I'm out. By the way, go hit me up on social media too. The Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, whatever you got, I got it. Snapchat. I'm on it. I'm out. It's the motherfucking D-O-Double-G.